So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at one of the most important reasons why we've learned differentiation. And that's its use in calculating stationary points of an equation or a function. So what are stationary points? Well, if we consider the gradient of an equation, so if we look at this equation or this graph here, if its gradient is negative, right? In other words, if the function itself is decreasing, it's going, its y values are decreasing as we look at them from left to right. So we read a graph from left to right. So if the graph is decreasing, you'll notice that it must have some negative gradient. So the gradient here is always negative, right? And then as the graph increases again, it would have a positive gradient. And this cycle continues depending on the function. So wherever the graph is going, the y values are decreasing from left to right, the gradient is negative, and we can see that. And if the graph is increasing, then the gradient must be positive. Okay? And then we get three, on this graph, we have three very specific points where the graph turns around. Okay, we call these turning points. And at that particular point, we, the graph is not increasing or decreasing. In other words, it's stationary. Right? So these are what we would define as stationary points. Okay? And therefore, the gradient must be equal to zero. So wherever the graph is decreasing, right, its gradient must be negative. So we could say dy on dx, because that's the function that describes the gradient, must be less than zero. And wherever the graph is increasing, well, that must mean that the gradient function, whatever it is, must be greater than zero, because the gradient function describes the gradient. If it's increasing, it must be a positive value. And at these stationary points, well, since the gradient is not uh, increasing or decreasing, it must be equal to zero. And therefore, if we're able to calculate the gradient equation and make it equal to zero, we can use that to find where the stationary points are. So we have these stationary points, right? So any stationary point on an equation is where the equation has zero gradient, right? So we have two kinds of stationary points, right? So we can think about stationary points, and we have two types of stationary points. And the first type we're going to look at are what we see on this graph here, and that's what we call turning points. Okay, so turning points are a specific type of stationary point, okay? But they're not the only type of stationary point. Okay, let's consider the maximum point, right? So the maximum point, so if we take this point here, let's call it Q, right? If we consider Q, let's look at what the graph is doing around that point. It is increasing and then it is decreasing, right? And so if we consider what the gradient is doing, the gradient is positive, and then at this particular point it is zero, and then it is decreasing. So at this very, this specific point here, there are no other y values, because remember the height is described by the y value, there are no other y values next to this point, so on either side, that are greater than this value. It is the greatest value next to the values next to it, okay? And so we call this a maximum point. Now, the maximum point itself, right, regardless of whether it's a maximum or a minimum, since it is a stationary point, its gradient must be equal to zero, right? And we can say that the gradient before the turning point is positive, at the turning point it is negative, and after the turning point it's negative again, all right? So if we could calculate the gradient slightly before the point and slightly after the point, 
if we found it to be positive and then the same and then negative, we would know that we had a maximum point. Right, then we get a minimum point. So back to our graph and we could call this point R. We can see the graph is creating a valley shape. And so we could have a point that goes down to a particular point, turns around and comes back up. And in this case, we can see that before the turning point, the gradient is negative. At the turning point itself, right, there is no change, so it's zero. And then after the turning point, it becomes positive again. But just like the maximum point, at that value, the turning point, the gradient itself, is equal to zero. So if I wanted to determine if it was a minimum point, well, just before that point, the gradient is negative, And just at that point, it is zero. And just after that point, it is positive. So we could look at values just before and just after, and we could determine whether this is a minimum or a maximum point. Right, then there's one other type of stationary point, okay? This is not a turning point, but it's called a point of inflection, right? And a cubic graph, the graph of x cubed is the perfect example. It's where the graph rises or decreases, gets to a specific point and has zero gradient, so it's zero, and then instead of turning around, it just carries on, okay? And we could have exactly the opposite. We could have a decreasing to a specific point, and then it just carrying on. So n minus x cubed would be an example there. And here, well, we can see that the gradient before the turning point is positive, and then at the turning point, it's zero, and then after the turning point, it's positive again. But again, the important thing is, at that point, the gradient itself is equal to zero. So if the derivative was equal to zero, it would identify this point. With the negative one, it's decreasing, then it would be zero, and then it would decrease again. So if you looked at a point before, and at the point, and after, and you saw that the values were the same, then you have a point of inflection, and not a maximum or a minimum point. Okay, so let's have an example of how this would work. Okay, so here we are given an equation. We are asked to find the stationary points, find their nature. So are they a minimum or maximum, or is it a point of inflection? And then we're asked to sketch the graph. So this is a cubic graph, so knowing the turning points allows us to sketch it more accurately. So we know now that if we want to find stationary points, we need to find the derivative and we need to set it equal to zero because stationary points have no gradient and so we're looking for gradient points or x values where the gradient would make um, zero. So the first thing we need to do is find the gradient function. This is just a normal polynomial, so easy to differentiate. We'll use the power rule, so 3x squared minus 3 plus zero. And what I need to do now is, in order to find turning points, I need to make it equal to zero. So what we can say is, for stationary points, dy on dx is equal to zero. So we set the derivative equal to zero. So 3x squared minus 3 equals zero. You can divide through by 3. I get x squared minus 1 equal to zero. This is a difference of squares, and so x is going to be equal to plus or minus 1. So that's where my two stationary points are going to be. Now, I know their x-coordinates. If I want to find their y-coordinates, I cannot now put the y-coordinates back into the gradient function because that's going to give us 0. That's what we just solved. So if I want to find the corresponding y-coordinates, I need to put them into the original equation. So let's say when x is equal to 1, then y is equal to 1 cubed minus 3 plus 1, which is going to give us minus 1. And when x is equal to minus 1, we're going to get y equal to minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, minus 3 times minus 1, which is plus 3 plus 1, and so we're going to get 3. So my two turning points are going to be 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 
3. Right, now I need to determine the nature of these stationary points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table for myself for each of the two stationary points, what their x values are and what they look like around the x value. So we'll start with minus 1, okay? So at minus 1, so this is my x coordinate. Now I'm going to think, well, what is the derivative at minus 1? And well, we know because it's a stationary point, the gradient is 0. Now I'm going to think, I'm going to think what is the gradient just before minus 1? So I'll put a value in just before minus 1, so maybe like minus 1.1. 1. 1. And I'm not really interested in the value that comes out. I'm more interested in if the value is positive or negative. So if I put minus 1 into the gradient equation, I'm going to get a positive number out. And if I put in a number after, so if I put in like maybe minus 0 0.9 into the gradient equation, again, I'm not interested in the answer. I'm interested in the value. Is it positive or negative? And I get a negative value out, okay? So that says the gradient is increasing, is stationary, then decreasing. So this must be a maximum point. And I can do the same for the other value. So I can say at x equal to 1, I know the gradient is 0 because that's what I calculated. So I'll think what just before 1, I have 0 0.9. And I, again, I put it into the equation, the gradient equation. I'm not interested in the answer, but the value, and this would be negative. And if I put in 1.1 into the gradient equation, I get a positive number out. And so I have a decreasing function because its gradient is negative, then it's stationary, and then it's increasing. And I can see that then this is a minimum function. Okay, so now I'm ready to draw my graph. So at minus 1, uh, th 3, we can say, so 2, 4, so there's 3. I have my maximum point, and at minus 1, 1, I have my minimum point, right? So I can even label these minus 1, 3, and 1, minus 1. And I also know from the equation itself that I have a y-intercept of 1. Okay, I'm not really interested in the x-intercept. I know that this is a maximum, so I need to be going up towards that point. And it's a turning point, so the graph must turn at that point and go back down. It must turn through this point and return back up. And so there's my sketch. Right? And I can then also label my y-intercept. Okay, so we just looked at calculating whether or not a stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. And it can be quite cumbersome to have to calculate values before and after. And so there is a much more efficient method that we can use, especially when we get to more complicated functions. So what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to look at this function. And we need to now think about the gradient. Not the function, but the gradient itself. Okay? So this function here is increasing. And so its gradient is going to be positive right? But the gradient itself, as you can see, is decreasing, right? Even though the value is positive, the gradient is, this graph is getting shallower and shallower and shallower, until eventually it has no more positive gradient, and then it is going downwards, right? It's a decreasing function, so the gradient must be decreasing. That means if we think about the gradient function itself, the gradient function itself started off as something positive, right? Because remember the gradient function, the y values represent what the gradient is. And so the gradient was something that was positive, but it was getting smaller and smaller until it became zero and it was stationary. And then the function decreased and the, the function is decreasing more and more and more and more. And so if we think about it, what this represents is a gradient equation whose gradient is negative, all right? You can see it's, it's going from a positive value and it's decreasing and then becoming a negative value. And that causes it to have a decreasing function.
So the gradient of the gradient function is negative, right, when we have a maximum value. And we've learned we have second derivatives, which would be the derivative of the derivative. So if you take d by dx of dy on dx, you get d squared y on dx squared. And so what we've just seen is if we have a maximum point, so here's my maximum point over here, my gradient is increasing, but it's slowing down, and then it's zero, and then it's decreasing, and it's getting uh, more and more and more um, negative, all right? So in other words, if the second derivative, right, so if we could find the gradient of the gradient equation, if the second derivative, right, if the gradient of this gradient was less than zero, because it's decreasing, its gradient is decreasing, we can see it's a decreasing gradient, then we have a maximum point. And so we can do the same thing with a minimum point. So if we consider the gradient here, this gradient is something that is, it's a negative gradient, right, because it's a decreasing function, so it has to be negative, and then it has a stationary point where the gradient is zero, and then after that, we have the gradient increasing, all right? So this is a gradient equation that starts off negative, becomes zero, and then becomes positive, and so it must have a positive gradient. So the gradient of the gradient equation is positive. So if we took d by dx of our gradient equation again, we'd get d squared y on dx squared, and we can see that if the second derivative is greater than zero, so we're not interested in the value, but we're interested in whether it's positive or negative. If the second derivative is positive, then we have a minimum value. And this is greatly going to speed up our calculation of whether the stationary point is a minimum or a maximum. So here we have an example. Here's an equation that we asked to find the stationary points, determine their nature, and use that to sketch the graph. So the equation itself is in a form that I can differentiate straight away. So using the power rule, I'm going to get 6x squared minus 30x plus 24. So to find stationary points, so we can state four stationary points. The gradient is equal to zero. So we'll set the derivative to zero and we'll find our stationary points. So we have 6x squared minus 30x plus 24 equal to zero. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. We're going to divide through by 6 and get 6x or x squared minus 5x plus 4 equal to zero. And this is quite an easy one to factorize. So x minus 4, x minus 1 equal to zero. So the stationary points are happening at x equal to 4 and x equal to 1. That's the x-coordinates of my stationary point. So if I want to find the y-coordinate that goes with it, I can't put it into the gradient equation because that will give us a result of 0. These now need to go back into our original equation. So let's do x equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, we put x equal to 1 into that equation. So we're going to get 2 minus 15 plus 24 plus 6. So y is going to be 17. And if I put x equal to 4 in this equation, so stick it into your calculator, did it all do all the work, we'll get y equal to minus 10. So those are my two stationary points, 1, 17, and 4, negative 10. And now I need to determine their nature. So to determine the nature of the stationary points, I could consider points before and after, but that's time-consuming. So what we're going to do is rather find the second derivative. So I'm going to differentiate the gradient equation. So I'm going to take this equation here, and I'm going to differentiate it with respect to x. So I'm going to say d by dx of this whole thing. 
So what I get out is called d squared y on dx squared, the second derivative. We can use the power rule, so we'll get 12x minus 30. So that is the gradient of the gradient equation. And I want to know what its value is at my stationary points. And these are my stationary points. That is their x-coordinate. So I'm going to stick these values in here one at a time. So when x is equal to 1, what is this thing equal to? Well, if I put x equal to 1 in here, I'm going to get 12 minus 30. 12 minus 30 is less than 0. So I'm not interested in what the value is, but I can intuitively see that it's less than 0. And if the second derivative is less than 0, then the point is a maximum point. And then I'll do the same thing for x equal to 4. When x is equal to 4, I put it into my second derivative. So I get 48 minus 30. That is greater than 0 because it's a positive value. That means that this must be a minimum point. And so it's much faster to calculate whether these are maximum or minimum points without having to consider points before and after. So with that, we are now able to sketch the graph. Okay, so we had 1, 17, and 4, and 10. So we have, we could say maybe like this is 1, 17, 4, and negative 10 is down there. And we have a y-intercept of 6, which could be here. And so our graph must be rising because the first point is a maximum point, And then we have a minimum point, And then we're back through there. And at this point, you could also, obviously, you should label your equation. So y equal to whatever the function is. Okay? And you should put your points in. So this is, uh, what was it, 1. 17, and this is 4, negative 10, and the y-intercept is 6, and we weren't asked to calculate the x-intercepts, so we don't need to put those in. All right, so that's just a look at how we can use the second derivative to calculate the nature of the stationary points. So it's a very important rule to remember. It's something that we will use time and time again, knowing what the second derivative calculates. So if it is less than 0, so it's always the opposite. So you'd think if it's less than 0, it would be a minimum, but it's the opposite. If the second derivative is less than 0, it's a maximum. If the second derivative is greater than 0, it's a minimum. All right, so we can use that to calculate stationary points. Now, if your second derivative is equal to 0, then you have a point of inflection. But for additional mathematics, that's not something that's required of you to know. And so you can, it's just interesting, but not necessary for your exam.